And then we move from Mary to another strong and very controversial uh, woman. Uh, James in London asks, was Margaret Thatcher really a liberal? Gosh, well, I suppose the short answer is that Margaret Thatcher was a liberal. But, of course, liberalism comes in all shapes and sizes. Margaret Thatcher was essentially what used to be called a Manchester school liberal. That's to say, she believed passionately in freedom of trade and the small state. And that is what she becomes about. Um, uh, it's a, really, in some ways, a kind of process of conversion. Um, she... Uh, um, Clearly, as a young woman um, and in her early stages of, as, of her career, even as a, as a government minister, as a member of the cabinet, before she succeeds Edward Heath as, as first Tory leader and, and then prime minister, uh, she, uh, I don't think, is particularly interested in these kind of questions. She's converted to it by Keith Joseph and a group of remarkable thinkers and political lobbyists, but she becomes the most its most effective voice. And the in the aftermath of the winter of discontent and the catastrophic failure of the Callaghan government, uh, and indeed the general sense of failure, uh, the rampant inflation, the uh, absoluteness of trade union power, the 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 the, 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 the flaunting. Uh, of their industrial might by the miners' union. Uh, she takes them all on famously and wins. You uh, restore uh, the currency, you uh, face down the trade unions, you destroy the power of the miners um, and move to a considerable extent. It's very easy to exaggerate just how much the power of the state is pulled back, but it is very considerably. There are great waves of denationalizations and so on. And it's not only at home that this happens. There is that extraordinary meeting of his mind's the right word as far as Ronald Reagan is concerned, the American president. There's that uh, extraordinary meeting of, to an extent, styles and minds and policies between Britain and America, with Thatcher becoming the pin-up girl for the reaction against the Keynesianism, the nationalisation, the neo-socialism uh, of the of the of the post-war years. And it's of course it's not only at home, it's not only in alliance with America, it is very firmly um, in, uh, in Europe as well. Um, everyone forgets, but they should remember that Thatcher really is the person who pushes primarily for the single market uh, in the EU. It was changed, it was bureaucratised, it was made rigid uh, by the common markets, by the EU, the common markets approach to these things, and above all, uh, the attitudes of the ECJ, the European Court of Justice. But Margaret Thatcher's liberalism, the notion of free markets, of free trade, um, applied very much uh, to, her, to, to her attitude to Europe uh, and to uh, Britain's place in it. When it came, comes to bigger issues of policy, the as it were, the question of Thatcher's liberalism is, is a much, much more mixed one, isn't it? Um, there is that visceral patriotism, uh, which, of course, leads to her great triumph in the Falklands. It's a very close-run thing, but she pulls it off. And that, of course, has precisely the opposite effect from Mary's loss of Calais. The victory in the Falklands is, the f the, is, is indeed the fulcrum uh, round which her premiership turns. Um, and does so uh, and, and presents her with a kind of highway to success um, uh, of a remarkable sort. Again, in terms of domestic policy, um, there's a general view that the Thatcher years represent a period of grave illiberal reaction. The other side of the thing, the, the not social liberalism side, well, indeed, uh, there's nothing that compares uh, with the extraordinary series of changes that had been carried through by Roy Jenkins as the very liberal uh, Labour Home Secretary um, uh, in, 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 in the Wilson years, in the Wilson government. But Thatcher 
is personally pretty liberal. Matthew Paris, um, who uh, for a period was you know, uh, uh, was a, was a spy and indeed was a parliamentary assistant, was was an MP, um, will testif will very much testify to that um, that that um, she is personally liberal. Um, and I think the most important testimony of this isn't Section Twenty Eight, the, uh, the, the 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 thing which which uh, prevents local authorities campaigning, as it were, campaigning and endorsing uh, homosexuality, and particularly uh, the, 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 the as it were the the teaching of its normalcy in schools. The big test is something completely different. It is Norman Fowler as the Secretary of State for Health, the extraordinary approach which the Thatcher government took to AIDS. There was, despite all the legends to the contrary, the government did not stigmatise homosexuals. It was completely the opposite. The whole message was in fact liberally false. Homosexuals, people like me, I lived through this, were overwhelmingly the group highest at risk. Change, one of the first people to uh, be diagnosed with AIDS, received the diagnosis of his final dementia at my birthday party. Mm -hmm. Very close to me. But although it was homosexuals who were infinitely more likely to get it, the way the government presented it, these great advertisement showing sort of falling cliffs and practically the end of the world sort of old see scenes of old testament uh, old testament horror um they presented it as a threat to everybody everybody to heterosexuals and homosexuals alike it was a very remarkable and very liberal gesture so fundamentally yes she was a liberal, if a rather funny sort of one, but then most liberals tend to be pretty funny people. Hello and thank you for watching David Starkey Talks. If, as I very much hope, you're enjoying them, why not become more actively involved and join my Members Club? As a member, you'll be able to take part in the members only weekly question and answer session suggest topics for forthcoming videos and have priority booking for my forthcoming live events. And while you're at it, why not have a look at the store page on my website davidstarkey.com. There you can purchase t-shirts and other merchandise, buy signed copies of my books and, if you're feeling brave and a bit flush, even arrange to take me out to lunch. Thank you once again for watching. I look forward to hearing from you and to welcoming you to my Members Club.